How are you, Vern? Rich, I'm doing fine. It's a pleasure to talk to you. It is a pleasure to talk to you. It's an honor to talk to you, Vern. Um, oh, come on now. It's the truth now. It is an absolute <laughs> truth. I've been uh, listening to you for a very long time. Um, and uh, before we get to uh, the documentary that's based on your career that CBS is going to be playing later on this month, what do you make of these new college playoff rankings where Florida State is undefeated and still not number one? What do you make of this, Vern? Well, I... I think it has to do, Rich, with just the perception of, of the level of their play. Uh, they haven't had the strongest schedule in the world, and uh, they've fallen behind, I think, three different times, including Saturday night. <clears throat> and, and I just think that, is, uh, that, that has affected uh, those who vote on this thing, and, and I'm not surprised by it. And you know what? Uh, who's number one? Number one, two, three, and four can't complain because they're going to be in the final mix and uh, they win two games and they're in. Yeah, I know. And, and I'm talking with Vern Lundquist of CBS Sports joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, and to that point, you see a, a lot of one loss teams, nine and one. TCU was in, uh, even though they won, they didn't have an impressive win, quote unquote. They're out. Ohio State, the Ohio State University. I got to put my Big Ten hat on here. Uh, they're out. Their one loss was obviously uh, to. Uh, Virginia Tech way back in the day, and Virginia Tech has lost to several other teams since then. Uh, what do you make of the the one-loss teams? Do you think they have it right right now with the one-loss teams that they have in, through, in one, two, and four, Vern? Well, uh, <laughs> go for uh, it. You know what? What I can't get right, Rich, is uh, the the head-to-head -head differentials when you've had those. There's so many one-loss teams, and uh, I trust the committee that they're trying to examine uh, everything about strength of schedule, strength of opponent schedule, all those sort of things. And I'm really not concerned about anything until they make the final announcement on December 7th. And by that time, I do believe, uh, you know, there's going to be a heck of a, uh, a discussion about number four and number five. Uh, and, and whoever gets that number five spot is going to howl into the night. That's but right. I, I still think there's a lot to be played, and so it's all going to play itself out. Vern Lundquist of CBS Sports joining me here, the voice of SEC football, certainly, on CBS Sports joining me here. Who is the best team you've seen this year then, Vern? Well, I thought in the middle of the season, Rich, it was Mississippi State. Uh, now I do believe it's Alabama. Uh, you know, that Auburn has kind of fallen off. Well, they've really fallen off. Uh, we've got Ole Miss this week. I think they're going to have a, a tough time in Arkansas. In, in my view right now, <clears throat> uh, Alabama is the best in the West. And this has been a brutal schedule for all of these teams. You know, at one point, there were four out of the, I think four of the top five were from the SEC West. And it shook itself out as we thought it would. What do you think makes Nick Saban so good? Organization. Uh attention to, to detail, the likes of which I've rarely seen. Uh, I used this anecdote on the air. Lane Kiffin told us to it, uh, told this story to us. When they were at LSU um, uh, for the primetime game a couple of weeks ago, they had their usual coaches staff meeting at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, and Kiffin brought out a diagram of the LSU Tiger Stadium. And he said, and then Lane told us he has a diagram for every team, team's uh, uh, stadium in the league. And at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, he said, if we go to overtime, this is the direction in which we want to travel. He knew where the student section was, and he wanted to go away from them. Uh, it's uh, tiny things like that. I mean, and Lane kind of shook his eyes, and he said, who would believe that we would talk about this at 9 o'clock in the morning? And it came to play. Uh, it was a factor in the overtime uh, part of the game. Vern Lundquist joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. CBS Sports is going to air a documentary celebrating Vern Lundquist's 50 years in broadcasting. It's going to be airing Saturday, November 29th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. It's called In Your Life, based on what you said Vern, when Tiger Woods and the 2005 Masters chipped in at 16 and the ball fittingly had the Nike symbol perfectly branded <laughs> as it rolled into the cup. And you just said, you know, have you ever seen in your life? And I'd love to just I don't know how to to go about peeling this part of the uh, of the onion here, Vern. Uh, 
did, which what stands out to you in the 50 years? I know that's a big, huge macro question, but what stands out well, to you? Uh, you know, I've, I've uh, Rich, I've had such great fortune. I mean, uh, for all of us, you and me and every, anybody else who's privileged to do this, there are highs and lows. But at the end of 50 years, I'm still gainfully employed. And uh, I've, there have been a lot more highs recently than I have ever expected. Uh, my fallback position always was the greatest sporting event I ever saw was 86 Masters when Nicholas won. Now, I got to be a part of that because Jack took the lead on the 17th hole where I was working. Uh, and that, that's always been – and I've always said that that was my favorite. Well, in the aftermath of last year's – Auburn, Alabama finish, which is, I think is the greatest finish I've ever seen in mm -hmm. sports. That was Chris Davis's 109-yard return of a missed field goal to win it. That's got to rank up there. I'm not. I don't know if it shoves Jack over to the side, but I think it, it ties. That, that that football game. The Iron Bowl a year ago really, really was special. And there's the 92 uh, Leitner buzzer beater of Kentucky. Did you when, Before that play, uh, Vern, obviously you're a professional for the, all these years. Were you preparing yourself for a possible game winner, or you thought there's no chance that this is going to happen? No, I, I, Leitner had been perfect to that point. I'll tell you what shocked me and still does. Uh, Grant Hill was going to inbound it, the, the six foot eight inch sophomore. And, and uh, Rick Patino, the Kentucky coach, opted to try to defend Christian Lager. So the first thing that Lenny and I did during the timeout, and if you recall, Sean Woods uh, hit the go-ahead shot with 2.1 seconds left. The first thing we did was, when, as they broke the huddle and came out, we both noticed that there was no one, no one guarding the inbound pass. And we didn't say anything on the air, but we looked at each other and kind of raised our eyebrows. So... I was I was kind of expecting if if Hill could make the connection, uh, and Leitner was was so brilliant in that game, and uh, I mean it's been replayed a thousand times. He had the presence of mind to take a dribble, and John Pelfrey and Dar Dar Derek Feldhaus were the two guys guarding him. Yeah, they both backed away a little bit because the last thing Patino said to his team is "Don't foul." And I think it played into the to the cushion that they gave Leitner. And then, of course, he yeah, it's one thing to give him a cushion, but my gosh, uh, to hit a 17-footer in that kind of game and that in my environment. That's, by the way, if I'm going to put Arkansas, I mean, uh, Alabama, Auburn, and Nicholas at number one, tied, Leitner and Duke, uh, they're a close uh, second place I in all bet. of it. And where does Happy Gilmore <laughs> land in all that, Vern? <laughs> It's, I promise you this, it is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> and here's why. The sure. kids, yeah. for some reason, the kids love it. Oh, yeah. And it's shown all the time on cable. And what it's done is given me a connection. I'm 74 years old. But it's given me a connection across two generations uh, to, to identify with the kids. And I get, I get a lot of... A lot of uh, happy Gilmore hollers as I walk through arenas or uh, in two stadiums. <laughs> Fantastic. Lafferty Vern, Daniels? Vern, you are the man. Uh, I'd love to have you back on. Please uh, please call back, and uh, I can't wait through our next chat. Anytime, Rich, and I enjoy your work as well. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.